The movie opens with the main character, Jake Sully, narrating his simple and peaceful life with his family in Pandora. As the chief of the Omatakaya tribe, he mentions that he and his wife Neytiri have a total of five children now. Two sons, Nateam and Loak, a daughter, Tuck, their adopted daughter, Kiri, and a human boy named Spider. Jake goes on to clarify that Kiri is the daughter of his dear friend Grace, who died while helping the Navi people fight against humans. As for Spider, he was left behind when all the humans returned to Earth after losing their battle. Jake states that the children play together and take good care of one another. Despite being different in color and body size, Jack mentions that all of the children live together like a family. However, Neytiri does not like Spider because he is revealed to be the son of Colonel Miles Quaritch, the evil man who almost wiped off the Navis. It turns out that Spider was left behind on Pandora because he was too small to be transported back to Earth. As he says, you can't put babies into cryosleep. Kiri, on the other hand, has a special connection with Spider and is really fond of him. As the human boy has spent all of his life with the Navi people, he thinks that he is one of them. One night, when Neytiri and Jack are talking, they notice some bright spaceships in the sky. Suddenly, the spaceships approach them and start wreaking havoc. The Omatakaya habitat is torched with flame, resulting in widespread destruction and deaths of many animals. From the spaceships, a group of soldiers with robotic artillery emerge and finish off whatever else is left of the place. Neytiri and Jake, who are watching from afar, are shocked to learn that it is an RDA spaceship carrying humans who are there to colonize Pandora and build another main operating station. The scene then shifts to one of the human laboratories where scientists have successfully created a Navi clone of the Colonel. He has been fed with the memories and data that were collected prior to his death. Because of this, the Colonel's clone knows everything except who killed him and how. Along with the Colonel, the scientists have also manufactured the clones of other soldiers who who were present during their previous attack on Pandora. As a result, the colonel and his men are hell-bent on destroying the Omatakaya, and, in particular, Jake. Meanwhile, in an attempt to ward off intruders, Jake leads a Navi army towards the RDA train supply lines. He successfully infiltrates it and manages to steal ammunition and food supplies. During this operation, one of his sons, Loak, does not listen to his orders and gets himself wounded. Jake scolds him and asks him to be more disciplined from here on out. On the other hand, and the colonel meets his senior, General Ardmore, who informs him about the Navi's flying partners called Scounds. They are currently attacking their helicopters and slowing them down. Hearing this, Quaritch makes a master plan to invade the forest, where they battled previously, and gather some information about them. Soon, he arrives at the forest along with his other companions. Unfortunately, Jake's children are also playing around in the same forest. Right then, the colonel looks around the previous battlefield and discovers his robotic suit with his remains still inside. All of this is observed by Loak, and he immediately contacts his father. With the help of a voice transmitter around his neck, Jake listens to this and suggests that Loak stay away from them and leave the place quietly. He and Neytiri then fly toward the forest to check on their children's safety. Sadly, when Loak and his siblings try to flee, they are captured by the humans. The colonel takes a closer look at their fingers and gets to know that they are his arch-rival's children. Just then, Neytiri and Jake arrive there and attack the soldiers. They manage to free most of their children, but not Spider. The boy is unfortunately taken away by the evil humans. Later, when the colonel asks Spider his name, he quickly understands that he is his son. Back in Omatakaya, Jake approaches his wife and suggests that they leave the place and head towards the eastern seaboard. He is worried about Spider revealing their location to the colonel and his people. Jake also tells Neytiri that until he is there with the tribe, the humans will keep attacking them, as he is the one who killed Colonel Korich in the first place. Neytiri doesn't want to leave her beautiful home, but she knows that whatever her husband is saying is true. Hence, she agrees to migrate with him. On the other hand, General Ardmore dishes out some cruelty on Spider by placing him in a rotating machine. Yes, put him in the little naked human spinny machine. That'll make him talk. He tries to extract important information from the boy, but to no avail. Spider is too loyal to his Navi parents, and he just won't budge. Surprisingly, the colonel cannot see his son in this state, so he immediately stops the spinning machine. He then approaches the general and tells her that he will handle Spider in his own way. Later, he meets the boy in a separate room and reassures him that he's 
not a bad person. He also discloses that he's here to take him back to Earth. This warms up Spider's heart, and he eventually agrees to provide him with the information he wants. In the next scene, Jake and his entire family leave their native home and fly away on their scouts. After flying for a few days, they finally arrive at a place called Metkaina, where another Navi tribe lives. Surprisingly, the Navis living here are fainter in color, and they prefer to stay in the water. Seeing Jake and his gang, they start making fun of their appearance. Soon, the head of the tribe, Tonowari, arrives with his wife. He feels skeptical about Jake and his family, and mentions that they are not suited to survive in the water. However, desperate to save his family, Jake promises that they will adapt to the place in no time. He then reveals how they are being chased after by some humans. Hearing this, Tonowari finally agrees to let them stay, and provides them with shelter. He also asks his children to teach Jake's children how to swim, and use their special creatures to move around the water. Obliging to the request, Tonowari's children take their new friends to the ocean and start showing them the basics. Meanwhile, the ever so mischievous Loak tries to connect with a sea creature, but loses control and falls into the water. Seeing him, Tonowari's children start laughing. As all this is happening, the girl Kiri can be seen deep inside the ocean. Surprisingly, she has adapted well to the place and can even control some sea creatures. Mysterious and convenient. The following day, while Kiri is meditating underwater, Tonowari's son, Aenang, and his friends approach her and start making fun of her, calling her a freak. Because of this, Loak arrives and punches Aenang. Aenang doesn't take this sitting down, though, and starts clapping some ass with his tick tail. Later, when Jake finds out about the incident, he angrily orders his son to go and apologize to Aenang, as he is the clan leader's son. Reluctantly, Loak agrees and says sorry. Although Aenang forgives him in front of the others, deep down, he is still angry. So, in order to teach Loak a lesson, he takes him to a scheduled location on the pretext of swimming. Loak is completely oblivious that there are dangerous sea predators in the area. A while later, when Loak is fishing, a large predator swims at him rapidly. Terrified, afraid, Loak looks around for help but fails to find anyone. But just then, a humongous creature named Payakan comes to the rescue. It swiftly kills the predator with the help of its wide head. Here, we get to know that Payakan is a Tulkun, a peaceful and intelligent creature. There are thousands of Tulkuns in the sea, which the Metakaina regard as their spiritual family. Payakan is the largest and mightiest of them all. In the meantime, Loak is rescued and brought to the surface by Payakan. The latter also helps the creature by pulling out some harpoons, which were apparently hurting it. With this, the two create a beautiful bond and befriend each other. Loak even climbs through his blowhole. It's disgusting. Later, when Loak reaches land, he is called up by Tonawari. The strict leader has found out about his son's shenanigans and wants Aenung to apologize. However, the selfless Loak accepts responsibility for his actions and lies that Aenung had nothing to do with it. This finally makes Aenung understand that the new Navis are not so bad after all. After some time, Loak reunites with his brother and friends and explains how Payakan saved his life. To his surprise, no one believes him. Instead, they reveal that Payakan is a killer, and that's why it was abandoned by the other Tulkuns. On the other hand, Spider briefs the colonel about some Navi culture and takes him to the Hallelujah Mountains to select a scoun for him. At first, the colonel struggles, but soon he gets the hang of it and flies around. Shortly after, he also gets information about Jake's possible location and heads towards the Metkaina Reef with his army. On arriving, he confronts some of the Zoras and inquires if they know Jake. When the Navis say no, the evil humans kill one of them and also burn their houses. Despite this, the Navis stand by their statement. Left with no options, the colonel signals his team to go for plan B. Now he wants to kill the Tulkuns in large numbers, hoping that this will finally draw out Jake. But there is another advantage to killing them. The Tulkuns have a precious liquid inside their brains, which can increase the longevity of life. On Earth, a single liter of this liquid will go for millions. Space Whale Brain Goop, the only resource more valuable than unobtainium. Soon, some hunters start chasing after the sea monsters. They strike numerous trackers into them and render them unconscious. In a heartbreaking scene, we can see a mother Tulkun brutally laid to death while her offspring lays by her in shock. The humans eventually leave, with the trackers still inside the Tulkuns. When the Metkaina discover that their friends are getting killed, they become angry and decide to engage 
engage with the attackers. However, Jake calms them down and mentions that they need to inform the Tulkans about the trackers first. This is the only way that they can prevent a future strike. As soon as Loak hears this, he leaves to inform his best friend, Pyakon, about it. Aenung and a few other locals also join him. After a while, they eventually meet Pyakon and prepare to pull the tracker out of him. But just then, the colonel and his hunting crew arrive in their whale ship. After seeing them, Loak connects to his father and informs him about the situation. In the nick of time, he and his friends also manage to pull the tracker out from Pyakon's body. After this, they hide underwater while the colonel's crew starts looking for them. Meanwhile, Jake approaches Tonawari and informs him that their children are missing. This worries the latter, and he quickly orders his people to prepare for war. Jake and Neytiri also grab their weapons, and soon, all of them collectively head towards the battlefield. On the other hand, the colonel orders his crew to launch their attack on the Tulkuns and find Jake's children. After searching for a while, they eventually find Kiri and Took and capture them in a net. Loak tries his best to tear the net, but gets himself pulled to the whale ship with it. Soon, the colonel arrives and cuffs them to the railing of the ship. He then takes Loak's color transmitter and asks Jake to surrender for the safety of his children. Having no options, Jake agrees to his conditions. At the same time, Pyakon notices his best friend Loak handcuffed to the deck and decides to save him. In a risky move, he suddenly jumps onto the deck and starts moving his massive fins. This throws away a lot of soldiers and obliterates the ship. Taking advantage of the distraction, Jake and the Metakaina also launch their attack on the colonel and his army. They want to save their children, but they also want revenge. Meanwhile, Spider breaks the controller of the whale ship, causing it to strike the rocks and allow water to fill inside it. Next, Jake and his eldest son, Nateam, quickly climb the deck and free Loak, Took, and Kiri. Then they order the children to return to safety, but Loak refuses. Instead, he decides to save his adopted brother, Spider. Nateam also joins him, and after a bit of searching, they find Spider. When they are about to leave the ship, the colonel notices them and opens fire. Unfortunately, Nateam gets hit by one of the bullets and is severely injured. Loak and Spider immediately take him to the shore to their mother, but because of the excessive blood loss, he passes away. Seeing her son die right in front of her eyes, Neytiri starts crying and screaming loudly. Meanwhile, the evil colonel manages to capture Kiri and Took using his scown. He later connects with Jake and reveals that both his two daughters are with him. After getting this information, Jake somehow calms Neytiri down and persuades her to join him and save their daughters. The latter obliges and filled with rage, she calls her scown, grabs her bow and arrows, and goes flying towards the ship. Soon, Jake approaches the ship and causes an explosion, killing the colonel's men. Neytiri also arrives there and starts shooting arrows at the remaining humans, killing them all instantly. Meanwhile, Jake finds his little daughter, Took, and frees her. But at the same time, the colonel also shows up. He is holding Kiri at knife point. He threatens Jake to put down his weapons, and the latter reluctantly does so. In the meantime, a vengeful Neytiri captures Spider and threatens to kill him. At first, the colonel mentions that he has no relationship with Spider, but when Neytiri makes a small cut in the boy's chest, he immediately leaves Kiri. With this, Neytiri and her family prepare to leave, but the colonel mentions that he will again hunt Jake down and kill him. Later, Jake realizes that he needs to eliminate the colonel to live a peaceful life. Hence, he returns to the battlefield. This time, the arch rivals fight each other in an old-fashioned fist fight. It is a brutal one, and the two match each other stride for stride. But in the end, it is our hero Jake who prevails. He manages to wrap his arms around the colonel's neck and knock him unconscious. Jake assumes that he is dead and lets him drown in the water. Unfortunately, he too struggles to breathe and starts sinking to the bottom. But at the same time, Loak comes to his rescue and brings him to the surface. Later, Pyakon carries the whole family and brings them to the shore. On the other hand, Spider also pulls his biological dad out of the water and saves his life. But when the colonel asks him to leave the place with him, Spider refuses and returns to his adoptive family. In the last scene, Jake's family and the whole Metakaina tribe bury Nateam's body at the bottom of the ocean, where the lighting tubes embrace him like their own. The movie ends with Jake remembering the best memories of his elder son and realizing that he is in heaven with their gods. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.